Now, we all, we've always known that there were Indians on Gallipoli. The great surprise, due to the work that I've done, the research, is that we always thought there was about 5,000 Indians on Gallipoli. And, and therefore, and we knew that there was about 1,600 dead. So, so the belief was, was that the, to be Indian on Gallipoli was a very, very dangerous thing to be. But now we know that about 16,000 Indians served on Gallipoli, both infantry and artillery and supply and transport. Most of the infantry were Gurkhas from Nepal, but mercenary soldiers in the British Indian Army. Um, but I just, just pick up on that. How on earth could, could those figures be so different? Well, partly because nobody has bothered to investigate the Indian experience of Gallipoli. I mean, it literally has taken 100 years for somebody to write a book about Indians on Gallipoli. And the original records that enable you to work out the, the number of Indians who served uh, are actually in New Delhi in the National Archives of India. Two years ago, or last year, I went off and, and looked at those records and realised that the, the 5,000 figure that we'd always tossed around as being the number of Indians who served on Gallipoli, which comes from a War Office publication, uh, couldn't possibly be true. And I, the explanation is, is that there were about 5,000 Indians who went direct from India to Gallipoli, but most Indians who served on Gallipoli went from Egypt to Gallipoli or from France to Gallipoli. And when you add the lot together, you get 16,000. So Indians on Gallipoli had about a one in 10 chance of dying, but the infantry suffered the majority of casualties. So if, for example, if you were in the 14th Sikhs, uh, a Sikh regiment, then 80% of the Sikh regiment became casualties on the 4th of June, 1915, uh, in a terrible attack. So it was, it was dangerous to be Indian on Gallipoli. Uh, and why do you think India has this kind of, uh, if you like, this kind of attitude of forget it all yeah. about Gallipoli? Yeah, well, the, the, there has been an attitude of forget it all in India about the, the Raj generally, about the, the pre-independence period. And Indian historians and Indians generally, except those who are in the army, uh, really don't think about the experience of those who fought for the Raj. But of course, it isn't really Indians on Gallipoli. I mean, as I say, most of the Indians on Gallipoli were actually Nepal Nepalese, they were Gurkhas. Mm. And the Indians came f basically from the Punjab. So if you came from Orissa or Calcutta or Mumbai or Chennai or any Bangalore or Hyderabad, whatever, you didn't have any family connection to Gallipoli. And that, of course, is one of the ways in which Australians, New Zealanders and Britons tend to feel an association with Gallipoli. Well, most Indians simply don't have that sort of connection. Um, and when we're talking about India, we're, we're actually talking about uh, the, the India of that time, That's right. which also incorporated Pakistan. Indeed. So, so uh, in a modern sense, do you think Pakistan could be called a, a, a competent? Uh, oh, absolutely. In fact, the, the Indian mountain artillery, which landed on Gallipoli at Anzac, alongside the Australians and New Zealanders on the 25th of April 1915, it became part of the Pakistan army when India was partitioned in 1947. So yes, there is a very direct association between today's Pakistan army and the Indians who served on Gallipoli. And, and the, the soldiers of the Pakistan army feel that connection, but most Pakistanis don't because they don't have any personal connection with those mountain gunners.